What is going on y'all? Donald here with another vi video editing trick and holy crap, I got a little mad scientist experiment to show you today. Um, I managed to overlay a little sub animation over top of a video using just FFmpeg. Um, it's quite the little beast and I will get into all that uh, very soon. Uh, before we can move forward, uh, do me a favor and drop me a like and subscribe. And it would really help the channel out. So let me show you what I have concocted. Um, I'm going to show you uh, these things in this order. First, I'm going to show you the actual sub animation that I wanted to overlay on top of another video. So it's just this thing. Uh, by the way, shout out to Brody for showing me where he got this. I figured it was a good guinea pig to test this with. So it's just this little thing down there thing uh, it's like five seconds long um it is the same dimension same resolution and everything as the video i was using so that, that's kind of important and the video that i want to overlay this on top of is um just like a little test recording i did real quick i'm um, going to test to see yeah, if i can hear it's only like or not. seven seconds long cool and click i'm going to show you what this looks like after I have ran this command on it. So I have already overlaid this on this video. And what it is, it is this. After you run this, this god awful command I'm about to show you, this is what you will get. I'm going to test to see if I can hear this or not. Ding. Oh. Ding. Ding. Ain't that some shit now? <laughs> That ended up being kind of complicated for me to figure out how to do it. Uh, and I'm going to show you the command. And as soon as I open it up, you're going to go, Donnie, what the actual hell am I staring at? But do not worry. I will try my best to explain what is happening. So I stuck it in this script. I'm going to open it up. Don't, 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 don't click off the video just yet. I will explain this, this god awful thing. So you can kind of ignore these right now. This is just me passing in parameters for this script. Um, the main thing you need to keep in mind is, okay, so, uh, it's whatever this main video that I want to overlay on top of is what I'm passing in. So in, my, in this case, it'd be like the test.mkv. And then I'm declaring that I have a complex filter graph. Well, you're damn right, I got a complex filter graph. So, uh, the first thing we're doing, and I don't know if this is necessarily important, but the example I kind of based this off of was doing it. So I figured, why the hell not? I'll just leave it in there. It's making sure that the the main video, all of its um timestamps are basically starting from the zero timestamp to make sure that everything, both the main video and the overlaying video, are uh, starting at the same timestamps. Um, now here, I am basically loading in the um sub animation file. And I am specifying here with this S option that I want both the video, the default video, and the default audio streams. And I those um, those two streams are being labeled as over V and over A, over V for video and over A for audio. Next step, I take the 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 sub animation video stream, and I. Uh, basically add an offset to its presentation timestamps. So why am I doing this? Um, there is an overlay that you, there's a there's a filter you use to do this whole overlaying thing called overlay, as you see down below. Now, when you do this, it will just overlay the like video B on top of video A, and they'll both start playing at the same time. Well, that's not really what I wanted. I wanted the overlay, the sub animation to only start playing after a certain time frame. And I looked up like a shitload of different ways to try to figure out how to do this. And a lot of them seemed like really, really overly complicated. And I almost gave up at one point. And then I found a solution where somebody was talking about resyncing a video's desynced audio. And they showed this and I was like, aha, wait, this is what I can use to do this. So. If I say, you see it's referencing a, a variable I pass in called start. So 
basically what's happening here is if I say that I want the sub animation to start playing uh, 69 <laughs> seconds into the main video, it will take all of the presentation timestamps for the sub animation and basically bump them forward by 69 seconds. So what you'll get is, is that the video will start, the uh, sub animation will start playing 69 seconds into the main video uh, duration, go the whole time, and then just be done. Uh, so we do that. Uh, then the next part is to actually do the overlay. Um, the way the overlay filter works is the first input is the main video, and then the second input is the thing being overlaid on top of the first input. And we pass in a couple options here. Um, these two first two are the X and Y offsets for how the um, the second video is overlaid on top of the first. Um, since these two videos are the same resolution, if I leave these alone, what you would get is the sub animation would basically pop up right in the middle of the main video uh, because that's where it is in its own video. But I didn't necessarily want it right in the middle. Kind of just want it off the side a little bit. So you'll see I am offsetting the X position, the um, the like the horizontal position by negative 600. So basically what it's done is instead of being right in the middle, it's kind of like stuck over on the side. Like, so it's not like obstructing my magnificent beard while the video is playing. Um, the Y position, I had no reason to change it, so I left it alone. Um, this option called end of file action tells the overlay filter what to do when the overlaid video is done playing. Um, this is just basically making sure that when the overlaid video is done playing, the whole video just doesn't stop. It just says, just, just keep playing. Just let the main video kind of take over and do its thing. Now, that only solved the problem of getting the video part of the sub animation to play when I wanted it to. Um, this did not address the issue of the audio. You have to also explicitly push the sub animations audio back to the same time span in order for everything to be synced up. So you will see that I am passing the, um, the sub animations audio stream into a filter called audio a delay, which is audio delay. And this one you specify um, the time duration in milliseconds you want the audio stream to be delayed. Um, I actually made a really funny mistake the first time I used this. I didn't realize you had to specify both the, like, if, if it's stereo, like the left and the right channels. And I left this alone. Like, it only had one, um, uh, one value. You, you specify the, uh, uh, the left and right channel offsets with the, between these pipes. And what happened was it started the video and played on the right ear immediately. And I was like, what, what the hell? That's not right. And then I let it keep playing, and then it played when it was supposed to in the left one. I went, ah, I made a boo-boo. Um, and then also before I am done with this step, I'm just, um, I'm having the volume of the sub animation because it's, it's kind of loud by default. I thought it was a little too loud, actually. So I'm basically just making it not as loud so it doesn't just kind of overpower the main video's audio. And then <laughs> last but not least, uh, we are doing, we are passing in the um, the two audio channels from the main video because when I record my videos, uh, they have two separate audio channels. The microphone's one channel and then the desktop audio is a separate channel. And then this delayed sub animation audio. It's passing into a filter called audio mix, which will basically just take all of these and just combine them in the one audio channel. Um, here I'm specifying the number of inputs, which is three. Um, the duration will determine how long this combined audio stream is. Uh, I think there's like three main options. There's first, meaning it will just set the duration equal to the first audio input, which would be the, the, the zero, the first audio input of the first video. Um, there's shortest and there's longest. 
Uh, I think even though I just said the longest is to make sure. Uh, dropout transition. So Amix does this kind of annoying thing, and I, I understand why it does it, but it's still annoying where if it's mixing all these audio channels together, it will adjust the volume of all of them down because if it didn't, and it just played them all at max volume, it might clip. So when one audio stream ends, there's this transition where it brings the volume of the other channel still playing back up. Uh, this is basically just saying, don't delay, I just immediately change it back to normal. And weights is the option that I was trying to use to make it so that the, when the audio went back up, the, it wasn't such a noticeable difference. If I take out these, this weights option, um, as soon as the sub animation uh, audio stream ends, there's, there's almost like a, I don't know, probably a good five or 10 decibel increase in volume for the rest of them. So what I'm saying here is for the audio channels for the main audio, I want you to basically put more weight on them to a scale of three. This is because the way a mix uh, lowers the volumes is you basically take the volume each um, stream has and you divide it by the number of inputs. So by default, all three of these volumes basically have a, they're playing in like one, one third their normal volume until they're uh, done with. Uh, but I want these two to be as normal as they can be. And this one, I don't care. So this is trying to make sure that when the uh, sub animations audio uh, stream ends, that there's not like this god awful increase in volume. And then I'm writing this out to a stream called out A. And then finally, we get down here and I am writing, at, I am specifying that I'm mapping the uh, processed video stream and the processed audio stream out to the file name that I specified. That's essentially what's happening. Now, this probably seemed like it was more complicated than what it was worth, but I assure you it wasn't. Uh, because the main benefit of me figuring this out is I can take this section of this filter graph, right? And I can put this in a, another filter graph, a, a more, a longer complex filter graph. My plan is to take this combine it with some other stuff I've been figuring out for doing most of my video editing with FFmpeg and make it so that basically once I'm done editing like individual clips of a video and I have like the final one left, I'm just gonna run like one big finalize uh, process and it's gonna do all, the, all of this shit all in one go. It's gonna add in the fade, it might normalize audio, it's gonna add in the overlay, uh, concatenate the little outro song stuff just without me having to touch anything. That would be uh, amazing. And uh, I will certainly let you all know when I have got to that point. Um, if you liked the video, drop me a like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions. Uh, with that, I'll y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.